That's the one under compression. That's the dead spark on the left. Now, observing that the inlet valve opens, just cracks open at 17 degrees before top dead center. Okay? So when does the spark occur? Does the spark occur with the inlet valve open? Because if the spark occurs when the inlet valve is shut, then of course we're not gonna we're not gonna get any fuel and air in there to actually burn. Inlet valve opens at 17 degrees before top dead center. Okay. Our Our exhaust valve closes at closes at uh, about 11 degrees after top dead center. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put an electric drill on the back and spin it over, and then we've got a timing light, and we're going to see exactly when the spark occurs. I'm going to start the engine up with the electric motor attached to it. Now, we're going to point the timing light at it. So we can see exactly where the valve is when the spark sparks. See? And that valve's opening all the way. Now, the reason you can see the exhaust valve bouncing up and down, the exhaust valve shut, the first time it's firing, it's compression. And then the second time it's firing, it's on overlap. So the exhaust valve is raised. So that's why you can see it going up and down. But you can see, on the compression and on overlap, when the time of light fires, that inlet valve is shut. So you can see this under light. And it's out of the light. The motor's moving. So you can see at both times, when it's on compression, the valve is shut. When it's on overlap, the exhaust valve is open a little bit when this fires, which means it's firing at about 10 degrees. And if I rev it up more, it'll be even more closed and that'll be even more open. So the inlet valve is definitely shut when the spark plug's firing. Hence, there's no fuel air mixture in there. And even if there was, it wouldn't do anything because we know from experience that, uh, so in a single like this, it's got wasted spark, or a four cylinder inline four stroke, it's got wasted spark. Um, this applies, the valve's shut. But in a two stroke, the piston fires at the top in a twin cylinder inline two stroke, and the other piston fires at the bottom. And when the piston fires at the bottom, the exhaust is open, the transfer is open, and the spark fires at the top of the cylinder with the piston at the bottom of the cylinder and there's no ill effect from that. And if there was, uh, Yamaha and all those motorcycle manufacturers wouldn't have uh, manufactured uh, two-stroke twins like the Yamaha RZRD LC350 uh, 250s, um, wasted spark coil 2 leads coming out of the coil, two leads coming out of the coil, that's how you pick it. If you're four-cylinder, four inline four motorcycles got uh, two coils, each one with two leads coming out, it's a wasted spark system. Hence, it makes sense to actually understand how wasted spark systems work. You know, in a four-stroke, there's no inlet open to have fuel air in there to burn during the wasted spark event. Um, and in the two-stroke, when the cylinder's at the bottom, um, there is some, but it doesn't matter anyway, okay? Even if the valve was opening, it wouldn't matter, okay? So the next thing we're going to get into is what's the difference between the spark voltage and a wasted spark and a spark under compression? because uh, the spark under the wasted spark is much lower because the, the, uh, the resistance, being the compression, temperature and density, um, is only air um, and atmospheric pressure or thereabouts on overlap. Um, the spark resistance is very low, the spark flows easily across the gap with very lower voltage and very low intensity. We're back to this motor. Now that you know what the ignition pattern that we're getting means, and that uh, as we increase and decrease the spark resistance, we get a change in the vertical amount of voltage coming down here from the potential spike to overcome and ionize the gap, air between the gaps so that the spark can flow. 
should be able to see the difference between the spark that occurs under compression and the spark that occurs during wasted spark because if we put two sparks together okay we should be able to see a difference in the spark line and the amount of voltage that's created in the spark one that's under compression and the spark that's not under compression during overlap one spark line coming down another spark line coming down and another one now if I go back to that it's a bit hard to see but every second one is blipping down between so you see one of them is the spark plug and one of them is the wasted spark okay because every second one is a wasted spark so you see down the center there that one's different to this one forget about this one because that one's just that one is that one okay so we'll just move that over just so you can see the two okay now you see the one on the left hand side the one on the left hand side is solid the one on the right hand side is jumping around so one of those is the wasted spark and one of those is the spark under compression okay now you can see the one on the right hand side is the live spark so we're going to turn some power and put some load onto it all right now you can see it really going off all right that's the one under compression that's the dead spark on the left Both. Right. And now we can see both of them superimposed. Right. You see, one's got a low spark. So we'll turn the load off. Alright. Turn the load on. Turn that light off. Okay. Turn that light on. Full load. Now. Okay, the uh, scope lead fell off and uh, the battery went flat and uh, I got sick of the engine noise so I think we've seen enough of that but I've taken some screenshots here. Uh, if you saw the previous video, which you should check out, um, we covered the scope patterns and what you're looking at on a pattern with the spark voltage, inductive line, potential voltage, the spark occurring during combustion. Okay, and then when we're looking at the actual spike here in a larger picture, we see the full potential induction spike measuring the pre-spark voltage or the potential to start or begin a spark. And what we're looking at is the wasted spark event and uh, the firing spark event because again, it's a wasted spark engine, the other one with the generator. And I'm also using it a little kind of dyno brake kind of thing because I can actually, uh, I've got... Um, some heaters actually plugged into it that I turn on to increase the load and then decrease the load back to idle. So when I hit the electrical appliances, a uh, heat gun and, and a heater, it uh, throttles on up to the governor speed and then drop it off. It throttles off back to the uh, to the unloaded same governor speed. So what we got here um, in the video I showed you is the pattern on the left hand side is the spark line here. Okay. And that's for the dead spark. Now, compared to the engine that we had, the other engine with the cylinder head off, this was the spark line that we were getting with a spark plug just hanging out on the outside of the engine. So that's the wasted spark. But under compression, when combustion occurs, we've got a flame in there and burning fuel. Um, it's a different story. We actually see um, a much greater voltage of spark and intensity of spark and we see a high variation that is um, indicative of what's going on inside the cylinder um, because that's the clear difference between the spark plug in the same cylinder without compression and without fuel to, to burn and this one is with the burning so not only this shows you the difference between the spark voltage and intensity with wasted spark and why you know the spark plug under the compression or the spark and the spark plug as a result of the compression is taking most of the load and doing most of the work battling to keep a spark going whereas you can see it's uh, a lower voltage um, likewise the peak values uh, down here it's a bit hard to see on the scope um, but the peak voltage or this voltage here on the parade line is longer on the on the compression spark whereas it's shorter 
on the dead spark. Okay, so we can see the difference in voltages there clearly. Um, but a dead spark is a very uh, small, stable spark, um, easy to spark across with less potential. It takes a lot more potential to crack a spark across uh, the cylinder. And once it starts burning, it starts firing. Then, as I say, uh, you know, your spark line is a window into the combustion chamber. Um, you will get the um, a proportional result in um, voltage reflected, like a kind of like a sensor. So what we've got down here below is our wasted spark here superimposed on our compression spark. Now this is with the engine unloaded, so the appliances are turn off. Okay, so it's, it's still at the same set RPM. It runs at a constant RPM. So then I turn the appliances on and load it up. And then you see that the dead spark here is the same, whether the engine's loaded, because it's the same RPM. There's nothing going on there. But you see the difference between the voltage occurring, the secondary voltage occurring here on the compression spark is considerably different. And if we zoom down into that, which um, I may not do on this scope because it's a bit hard, what we will actually see is a reflection of the burning that's occurring because as the combustion burns, the turbulence that uh, affects the, uh, the um, air or the, the mixture in, in between the gap will immediately change the spark resistance, which will have an immediate reflection on the voltage, and you can actually see what's going on. So if you were to use a modern oscilloscope PC as based oscilloscope, you could actually capture this and you can compare it against engine runs and you can actually see the moment that the throttle snapped open and the spark responded and then as it accelerated and then you could also see moments where um, some problem arose during it um, during the course of the of the uh, revving up it's a good idea to learn how to read them and read them a lot the more you do the more you see um, it you know it was a bit of a dark art when I was a mechanic way back when we had tune scopes. Not a lot of people used them and they looked at them and most of them collected dust in the corners of workshops, but I used them extensively. So I got used to looking at the patterns and seeing what was going on. Um, but that's a bit of a lost art since points ignition systems went by the wayside. Everyone declared, oh, we don't need them. But um, um, now we've got, you know, coil over spark um, plugs. We haven't got a secondary lead to connect to, but I remind you, that I'm not actually m measuring the secondary resistance. I'm not actually measuring the secondary spark line. This is the primary. This is the primary side of the coil. Okay, but as I've explained in earlier videos, because of mutual inductance, um, we're always going to see a mirror image of the secondary on the primary. And um, you don't have to have a tune scope, you can just use a basic old oscilloscope like I had. And the one I've got is an old uh, cathode ray oscilloscope, it's probably worth about all of 10 bucks. So, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that covers the wasted spark and also gives you a bit more insight onto reading spark lines in the one video. And I think that will about do it. Uh, sharing is good because it gets, to, gets around and other people actually get to see the videos and uh, they're very unlikely. At the moment, because uh, well, you know, YouTube sort of shit the bed since about September 2016, and uh, yeah, it doesn't look good. We might, we might have to uh, move our videos to uh, Facebook or something else um, because there's no point in doing them if uh, no one's going to watch them because uh, it's not like they're crap and useless information. Um, but uh, yeah, aside from that, um, indulge yourself in the lost art of um, ignition spark uh, diagnosis and spark line reading. Give it a shot.